I promised a viewer I would do a video on calibrating Arducopter ESCs and tell you the truth I've already been through it one time and this is so uneventful I'm not sure how I'm going to finish up this video but I'm going to try to help them so I've got my radio here got the flame mill back down it's fine for this I've got it hooked into my bench power supply for battery voltage and I'm hooked in USB right here so I can tell it uh, that I want to calibrate the ESCs. So let's go over to the computer. I'll show you the whole sequence and then we'll discuss it. And here's the Ardu copter side, the mission planner side. We go into setup, mandatory hardware. ESC calibration. I'm going to come back to this in a minute. And all you do is click calibrate ESCs right here. And then we go back to the platform. Now, after I clicked calibrate ESCs, I shut down the USB connection. That's why there's nothing powered up here. And now I'm going to do what the startup the ESC calibration says basically on our copter I'm going to set my radio throttle to the highest position I'm going to reconnect the battery which in my case is turn on the bench power supply Telemetry recovered. I'm going to listen for the ESC's to beat telling me they've got the top throttle position programmed And I'm going to lower the throttle to its lowest position and wait for them to tell me they've got that. There you go. It's all over. Now, wasn't that instructive? I'm kind of making fun of it because technically it's all done. All six of the ESCs have been calibrated now. The problem was is there wasn't much to see there, was there? The other problem is, is it just doesn't go that way for most people, does it? So we'll go back to the computer real quick. So, uh, there was an ESC calibration that went easily. Uh, and like I say, there isn't much to show when it goes that well. But, nowadays people are having lots of troubles. The reason for that is, is the ESC manufacturer has more control over all of this than anyone else. Ardu is really not in the picture, so to speak. Uh, maybe they can modify their software for the newer ESCs. We'll see what happens in the future. But let's talk about those people who don't have an event as easy as mine just was. Mine was easy because I'm using just normal straight up ESCs. The Ardu Copter recognizes them. Ardu Copter knows exactly what to do with them. When I click calibrate ESCs right here, Ardu Copter does a bunch of things. It sets up the flight controller so that the next time it boots up it'll boot up in a mode that allows complete pass through of the throttle signal to all the motors uh, and just sets it up to calibrate ESCs the way the ESCs mostly most of them want to be calibrated uh, so let's talk about problems. First of all, there's a little problem in this sequence right here. Uh, maybe I shouldn't call it a problem. It says to remove the props, which I did. After pushing this button, they're talking about this. Disconnect USB and battery. Yeah, well, I did. There's a step, there's steps missing right here where it says plug in battery. Before you plug in that battery, you're going to have to follow the steps dictated by the ESC manufacturer's data sheet. That's why there's nothing between those two steps on Arducopter. 
they can't tell you what to do there. The data sheet for your ESC will do that. Uh, if this was 10 years ago, I could tell you easily that all ESCs calibrate by setting your RC transmitter throttle to its highest position. Power up the platform, let the ESCs recognize that position, and then drop the throttle to zero, let the ESCs recognize that position. That's not how it goes nowadays. That's how it just went with mine. Again, you can see right here, uh, mine are just normal ESCs. It was real easy for me to do, uh, luckily. And you can see in this, there's one shot, one shot, 125, brush, D shot, just different D shots. So there is a way to tell it that you have some other types of ESCs that this can program before, but in general, the step between disconnect USB and battery and plug the battery back in is something you're going to have to look in your ESC documentation for. And that's what you have to do between these two steps right here. For me and most of the ESCs I have used, I have one here that automatically sets up. It doesn't need to be calibrated. It's a thrust. ESC. I have another one for an RC car I used to have. Its ESC calibration sequence has more steps than what we're going through here because you have to tell it the high forward throttle position. You have to tell it a midpoint which becomes the stop point and then you have to tell it a low point which becomes the high full reverse speed so again it's in the ESC documentation so plug the battery in it says here when the LEDs flash push the safety button if present I didn't have one the ESC should beep as they are calibrated, yes, and the ESC documentation will tell you how they respond. Restart the flight controller normally. Now that seems all just really easy and straightforward, and it seemed to be for me. Uh, just basically couldn't even make a video of what was going on because it was all magic occurring inside the devices by clicking on that calibrate ESC buttons and moving a throttle stick around turning the power off and on wasn't much to it when things don't go well there's a lot to it because you have to figure out why is this not going well first of all if you come in here and this button is grayed or unclickable more than likely you've got ESCs on your platform that our Ducopter doesn't understand you may be able to get this button working again by coming in here and tell you, oh, I've got D-Shot 300 uh, ESCs. I don't know. That will depend on your ESCs. Let's talk about when none of that works. That means you're going to have to calibrate your ESCs outside of this utility. Most likely, you're going to have to calibrate them directly from your RC receiver before it goes to the flight controller. So, you're going to have to put your RC receiver, in the case of mine right now, it's a Crossfire uh, RC, I mean, uh, receiver, RC receiver. You're going to have to put that in PWM mode so that its output is a pulse width modulated signal that the ESC can measure at calibration time. In my case on the flame wheel, I would have to set up my ground and voltage and then uh, RC channel 1 PWM and connect it to one of my ESCs and go through that sequence I just showed you. It's the same sequence for the, ES the ESCs. High throttle, put the battery 
on the platform when you hear the beeps lower the throttle when you hear the beeps again you can power it down going to have to do that six times one for each of those six ESC's all the way around and then pretty much need to come back and really find that your PWM uh, matches and you can find some of that here uh, if you save away this calibration when it's done uh, you can look at what the output of your radio was. I have a little device that measures PWM. I can connect between the flight controller and the ESCs and see that that's exactly the same PWM that's coming out of my flight controller. I've shown that before. But the long and the short of this is you're going to have to calibrate your ESCs outside of the flight controller basically I, I, I've never found another way to do it now I've got a little connector that makes that easier for me and this is it it's got a DuPont connector here three pin standard RC DuPont connector we all have seen for years and years and then it connects to four other DuPont connectors at a time it's called a DuPont hub I recently showed this to another viewer and I looked all over the internet to find one and I can't. You could easily make one. These are just all, it's taking this one input and passing it to four outputs. You can do four ESCs at a time with this. I can't find it still. I have another one right here that's got six on it I used for the flame wheel and 10 years ago. Uh, this one does a quad quite nicely. So there's other ways to program the ESCs that one little problem is sometimes the flight controller doesn't pass the signals on power up that it needs to and you've got to work around that problem. With these ESCs, I suppose the best thing would be to get somebody nearby that can physically come and help you with them and uh, help you get them calibrated because it's going to be a bear to do across the internet and stuff with others not probably having exactly the same kind of ESC as you do. So that's about the best I can do on this subject right now. Again, uh, I'll, as I get my hands on different ESCs, I'll try to show them so that, uh, I guess, a general idea of how ESCs calibrate can be developed. I, I don't know what to say about this one. It's so, so, so dependent on the ESC manufacturer's instructions. And secondly, it's so dependent on letting that unmodified signal get through your flight controller with just a battery power-up because it's likely not going to take to, um, well, when it powers up, the ESCs only wait so long to see that transition. That's a short period of time, and that's the problem. You can't really manipulate the flight controller much to output those signals because you don't have time. That's, again, all dependent on the ESC manufacturers. The ESC manufacturers made their ESCs programming such that it sits there forever to wait for a low throttle signal, then you could do all sorts of stuff, but that's not the way they work. All right, sorry if that doesn't quite fit the bill. I, that's the best I can do right now. I'll try to keep hitting this as the needs arise and be completely happy to help individuals uh, with individual different ESCs. If you can email me that information or whatever, I, always happy to help if I can. Sometimes I can and sometimes I don't succeed. Uh, I succeed more often than I fail so I'm happy with that. While I was editing the video I want to add this. In the case where this area here 
is just simply no joy for whatever reason. Sometimes this isn't grayed out, but you click here and error message comes up. In other words, it just doesn't work. For whatever reason this area doesn't work, you can try to simulate what this does. You're going to have to come over here and you're going to have to change the way your platform arms. You're going to have to make arming check a zero where it doesn't check diddly before it arms. You're going to probably always disable rudder, rudder arming. And then there's one other perimeter. which is called initial mode in Arducopter, right here. You can see right now, after this platform arms, this, by this list, is what it's going to do. And see, stabilized is going to bring you up in a mode that will pass your input to all your motor outputs. Uh, that's what I've also found worked. So after you set these things the way I'm talking about, you can power down your model and raise your throttle to high and plug the battery back in and the there's a good chance the ESCs will go through a standard calibration. Or you can do whatever calibration at that time that the ESC documentation calls for. You may be able to get away with that. And do multiple ESCs at the same time, like in my case all six, and uh, not have to disconnect any wiring or worry about matching PWMs on the inputs and outputs and such. Other than that, if you can't get ESCs going, best thing to do, like I say, is to find somebody local that's using the same ESCs. If you might not be able to find somebody local that's using the same ESCs, but you might have somebody local that's I've done a lot of ESCs that can try to help work through it. That's probably the best. Uh, when you go out on the internet and stuff, you know, you'd have to send me what's going on in this area, what the name of the uh, ESC is, uh, and probably videos of your procedure and myself or uh, I think a plethora of people out there on the internet would be happy to look at it for you and add what they can. Uh, other than that, uh, this, this ESC on uh, platforms right now is kind of a pain in the posterior. All the rest of the stuff just gets firmware put into it. ESCs get all sorts of programming don't really program, uh, yeah. You might program your flight cameras for color, color balance, white balance, etc., etc., etc. It's kind of programming. I think it's more configuring and setup. I guess this is the same thing with ESCs. We've all configured the brakes and told it whether it has a lipo or a lithium ion battery on it or whatever. Uh, just ESC seem to need more care than any other peripheral that you attach to a flight controller, it seems like. So that's about all I can add to uh, the video I'd already done earlier today. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you.